The Impact of Economic Growth on Inequality, explained by the Citizen Genius Project. Economic growth is often said to be a way to reduce economic inequality, and so this video is going to explore the relationship between growth and inequality. For background information on economic inequality, including the difference between income and wealth inequality, and the degree of inequality that currently exists, check out another video. When visually examining the relationship between growth and inequality, I'll often use the popular inequality comparison based on the 1% at the top and the 99% at the bottom. Specifically, this graphic based on 2013 data shows that the top 1% had 36.7% of the total U.S. wealth, while the bottom 99% combined for 63.3% of the wealth. Even though this is a rather simplified portrayal of inequality, statistics like this help to show the connection between how much income or wealth there is and how it's distributed among the people. Simply put, at any one point in time, there is a fixed amount of people and a fixed amount of income and wealth. Therefore, if a few people have a lot, many people have very little. In this context, reducing inequality would require taking from the richest few to give to the poorest many. To avoid taking from the richest, the assertion is that economic growth reduces inequality over time. While that could happen, there are actually three possible outcomes. Inequality can be reduced, as just shown. It can remain the same, and it can be increased. Let's examine these three possibilities. The first possible result of economic growth is that growth can reduce inequality if the growth disproportionately goes to people at the bottom. As the example on the screen shows, the richest people can maintain their amount of income and or wealth while the people below see their share increase. This is how growth can reduce inequality. The second possible result of economic growth is that the degree of inequality can remain the same. The growth can be distributed in such a way that both the richest and bottom people receive more income and or wealth but the amount each group receives maintains the existing level of inequality. Thus, growth will not necessarily change the degree of inequality. The third possibility is that economic growth can increase inequality if the richest people capture a disproportionately large amount of the gains produced by the economic growth. The richest people can see their amount of income and or wealth increase, while the people below see their share remain the same. In this way, economic growth can cause inequality to increase. In referring back to the assertion that economic growth reduces inequality, it's clear that the assertion is not entirely accurate because growth could also maintain or increase inequality as I've just demonstrated. To this point, I've explained how economic growth can impact inequality from a theoretical perspective. In real life, however, it's difficult to define a relationship between growth and inequality because there are many other factors that also impact inequality, such as changing social values or government policies. Let's briefly examine U.S. economic growth from a historical perspective to see what I mean. This graph shows how wealth inequality has changed over time as indicated by the top 1% share. We can see that the average growth rate of about 4.3% in the late 1960s coincided with a slight reduction in inequality, whereas the approximately 4.3% growth in the late 1990s coincided with an increase in inequality. The same can be seen in looking at income inequality. The 4.3% growth in the late 1960s coincided with reduced inequality while the late 1990s saw increased inequality with nearly the same growth rate. This inconsistency in real life tells us that economic growth cannot be guaranteed to provide a particular impact on economic inequality. 